what's good? Welcome to the channel. Glad to have you back. All right, man. Going to talk about Deontay Wilder and this, uh, a very good video, man. It was honestly, it was a challenge issued to hardcore boxing fans to explain why Deontay Wilder could have turned down $120 million of what possibly Shelly Finkel could have in mind for Deontay Wilder that would trump what DAZN had offered him. And to me, um, I can't tell you that I know um, exactly, but it's not hard for me to believe at all, considering the facts that we know about boxing in the U.S. and the experience of the people involved, that they don't have very good reason to have turned down that offer. Before I go, and I'm going to explain that to you. I'm going to explain it to you in response to that, in response to that question. But I'm going to do it in a video because I don't like to go to other people's um, channels. I might link it to or send a private message to the person that I'm responding to. But most people that are familiar with my channel know that those, there's only a couple UK channels that I watch and that I really do enjoy. And this is one of them. So I'm going to get into it. Before I do that, though, I want to welcome you back to the channel and ask you if you have not done so already to hit the subscribe button do all those good things check us out in our live streams also patreons we got some good stuff patrons we got some good stuff coming up on the patreon so let's get into this all right man i'm gonna share with you some numbers it is very reasonable to assume that deontay wilder and shelly finkel didn't want to take that deal because they believe that they can make more money by not taking that fight. That's the most simple or not to take that deal that they could make more money in the long run. And then it's better. It's in the interest of Deontay Wilder not to take the fight, not complicated solution. If somebody turns down a deal, you would assume that they didn't think the deal was good enough and that they could do better elsewhere. Now that is a different subject from no saying, you know, do you know exactly what that could be? Could it be Adam Konaki? Could it be, I don't know, um, Luis Ortiz, could it be whoever? Could it be Joe Joyce? Could it be a series of these guys? You don't know. But I think it's fair to assume that reasonable people that turn down an offer do so because they believe that they got a better one. Now, is it possible that they could have a better, or better one and that they could see a road to a better deal? I think absolutely positively that there is logic behind that what they can do and if you don't if you think it doesn't even take that much thinking or it's not that hard to see a path in which turning down a 40 million dollar fight for De anthony joshua and then a 40 million dollar rematch if you if you win could be turned down and i'm going to go through the numbers and let you know why i believe that is i'm going to switch screens real fast Hopefully that didn't cause too much confusion when I did it. And let's go through this. So first of all, there's a couple things I want to tell you that I think there's some assumptions that people in the UK make about boxing in the United States and the UK that is just not true. And specifically as far as this fight goes. This fight, the two fights between, if there are fights between Anthony Joshua and Deontay Wilder, and I do believe eventually the fight is going to happen, those fights are not going to be in the UK. So... The portion of the question which said that that how could he turn down two fights where one could be in the United States or one could be in the uh, U.S. and the other one could be in the U.K. Let's get that. Let's get that those fights are going to be in the U.K. out just out of the equation because the money's not in the U.K. And if you look at the history of big money fights, big heavyweight fights, big whatever you have a mega fight. The biggest fights, the biggest money making place in boxing is the United States. 35 of the 39 largest gro uh, grossing or revenue producing fights in the history of boxing, at least the ones that I could find, were all in the United States. 36 of the 39 biggest fights, and I've got them on the spreadsheet. And I adjusted, or the source that I got them from adjusted them for uh, for inflation, because obviously Muhammad Ali was fighting in 1974. That was 46 years ago. Consequently, you know, 45, 46 years ago. So the dollar goes a little bit further. So if you're not sure what inflation is, I'm not going to explain it in this video. Just Google inflation and it, and it can be explained to you. So but let's go through this. 
And I put a couple, uh, I put a couple columns in here just to, that I'm going to, I'm not going to go through all these numbers, right? Because we don't have time in the video, but you have the fight that was made, the revenue, the revenue now with the inflation, the country that the fight took place in with the exception of this one, because this was actually Zaire, the all time revenue based on the, on the inflation and the team member that was involved, AJ Wilder team involved. Now, why do I think it's important to say what team member was involved, whether there was a team member involved in that? Because that's telling you that they have reasons, they have experience in this area, and they might see something as a result of having built and worked on these type of fights before, where they might be able to see some potential for some things that people on the outside looking in might not be able to see. Now, 18 of the 39 fights, the big 18 of the 39 largest fights ever, revenue-wise, I got on this list and have involved a member of Deontay Wilder's team. Whether it is Shelly Finkel as a manager or Al Heyman as a manager advisor. Got it? Now, let's look at how many of these fights, like I said, 36 of the 39 happened in the United States and Without just going down this list and saying U.S., 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 and just see, I just keep going. These are all U.S. fights, U.S. fights, U.S. fights. Let's go down to the U.K. fight. You have Anthony Joshua versus Vladimir Klitschko, which grossed, according to the sources that we have, these are all estimates, $64 million gross. That's that's Anthony Joshua versus Vladimir Klitschko. You have Anthony Joshua versus Joseph Parker at $50 million. Anthony Joshua versus Alexander Povetkin at 50 million. This is the 36th, 38th, and 39th fight. And this particular fight, Anthony Joshua, Vladimir Klitschko, you can see that there was an AJ team member and a Wilder team member involved. But when you go through all these other fights of anybody being involved in it currently right now who's who's involved in these negotiations, you see that Deon, either Shelly Finkel or Al Heyman were involved in these, in these fights. Floyd Mayweather, Manny Pacquiao. Floyd Mayweather, Conor McGregor. Mike Tyson, Evander Holyfield. Oscar De La Hoya, Floyd Mayweather Jr. Mike Tyson, Peter McNeely. Floyd Mayweather Jr., Ricky Hatton. Floyd Mayweather Jr., Canelo Alvarez. Floyd, Frank Bruno, Mike Tyson too. That though, quite honestly, there's a chance that Shelly Finkel wasn't the manager at, time, at the time because that was early in Mike Tyson's career. However, Shelly Finkel worked on that team, worked on the team with with uh, Mike Tyson. So very experienced in knowing exactly what the value of these heavy, these mega heavyweight fights are, was definitely involved in the biggest fight that this that would rival this fight in the United States, which is Lennox Lewis and Mike Tyson, which at the time rev, uh, brought in one hundred and twelve million dollars in in, in um, revenue. Now, Mike Tyson, this is a faded Mike Tyson, by the way, a faded Mike Tyson, Lennox Lewis did one hundred and twenty million dollars in revenue. If you adjusted for inflation, one hundred and fifty six million dollars in revenue in one fight. Now, if you're telling me that in one fight. That a fight like that that took place. Let's see how many years ago this was. In 2000, it took place. 11 years ago. Oh, I'm sorry. It took place in 2002. Took place 17 years ago. Almost 17 years ago. Can gross $112 million. That if you have a 50-50 fight in the United States that could be at this level, both guys would be making 50, would be making $50 million. That's Lennox Lewis, Mike Tyson. Lennox Lewis was never as big. Lennox Lewis isn't any bigger in the United States at, than Deontay Wilder is. And Mike Tyson was faded at the time. Your boy was fading at the time. Shelly Finkel's involved. Shelly Finkel might be thinking, hey, man, why would I? So if we got this big mega fight, let's try to make this big mega fight, get this thing to the situation where we can try to make it 150 $200 million fight. Let's see how many times that the $200 million fights have been made in the United States. You have, this is the gigantic ones, obviously. Muhammad Ali, George Foreman, 
net present value, right? Or re after inflation, 500 million, 500 million, 500 million, 500 million, 300 million. Tyson Holyfield, 281, uh, 281 million. There is, it is possible that a Deontay Wilder versus Anthony Joshua, if they built up to it, could be on the level of a Mike Tyson, Evander Holyfield. Maybe, maybe not. But even if it gets to $150 million, that means $150 million over two. They could happen twice. $150 million for the first fight, $150 million for the second fight, right? That means the camps between the two of them over two fight make $300 million. Oh, $150 million for two fights. It is very foreseeable that there could that there could be a reason why Ant Deontay Wilder would turn down that fight. Especially if you're saying he's going to get 40 instead of getting instead of getting 70 for the fight, right? It's a hundred, it's 40 million, I think it was a hundred million dollars. 40 million, 40 million. But here he can make a hundred million, a hundred million. Why not? I think that's reasonable. I think that it's reasonable and it's worth saying, hey, man, let's come up with a plan to make that happen. Now, I'm not going to tell you that I see what the plan is to make that happen. I don't know. But I do know that it's very possible that that could happen in the United States. The big the money mecca center for the, the money mecca for boxing. Deontay Wilder as an American heavy is the number one American heavyweight. His name continues to grow. He's getting a lot of publicity. They've got a lot of people behind him trying to push his name out there. You got the guy, he's, he's growing. So I don't think that it is unreasonable to say, especially on Deontay Wilder's part, to say, hey, if I got guys that have been involved in 36 of the 39 biggest fights, monetary fights to happen, and they're advising me, look, man, I got a plan for you. And it doesn't involve you signing up for a fixed a fixed fee fight two fights in advance i don't think that's unreasonable at all and especially in the circumstance where they're offering it and they're not even telling you how much money they're putting up seems reasonable to me but hey man you know that's just me but if you look at these numbers floyd mayweather manny pacquiao and just think on the outside of it if they could build this fight, an Anthony Joshua to Deontay Wilder fight in the United States where it could make the revenue that uh, that, Fl that Floyd Mayweather Jr. Manny Pacquiao did. Come on, those guys both pulled in in one night more than the, than the, than the three, four. And I think I heard it was a five fight. Whatever that package was that DAZN gave, these guys both pulled that in in a night. And, they're, and Deontay Wilder is a heavyweight. Why shouldn't he bet on himself? Why should he take why should he take why should he take the money and run? But most importantly, you know, get out of you guys head that that fight's going to happen in the UK. If you look at these numbers for the fights that take place in the United States and how many of the big money fights happen in the United States, it's man, it's very very unlikely that that fights that Anthony Joshua and Deontay Wilder is going to happen in the UK. So, anyway, it is what it is. That's my thought on it and with that, I'm out. Peace.